I have five hours to catch five bass that weigh 10 pounds on a portion of a lake I have never fished before. Can I figure out these late summertime bass or will I fail? I guess we will find out. There he is. That's what I'm talking about. Welcome to Lake Break, a series devoted to the number one question that I get, how do you find bass on a new body of water? I don't get help, I don't get information, I just put the boat in and go. I mean really big. Today we are fishing Indian Lake here in Ohio, and this is actually a lake that I do have some experience on. I fished several tournaments here in the past, but every time that I have been here, almost every single tournament I've ever fished, I have fished it in a few select areas. The Preserve, Lucy's Pond. There was a couple of areas that always dominated. They are full of lily pads and grass, but over the last couple of years, a lot of zebra mussels have gotten into this lake, which really cleared up the water, and it also made that grass spread throughout the entire lake. So now the entire main body of water has a lot of grass in it. Now in today's lake break, because I want it to be fresh, because I want it to always be new, I'm really going to focus on kind of the main lake portion of this lake. Again, a, a part of this lake that I have never really targeted in my life. I think this is something that is really important for all of us fishermen to do because we all get accustomed to fishing some of the same areas on our local bodies of water, the, the areas that we always go to. But I think it's important to just go out there and spend days fishing new places on that lake. We're gonna get right out to the main lake. There is a, there's a main portion of islands that run through this lake. And to me, it just really sets up to be a good place for a lot of bass to be because these islands are kind of mid lake. And I know that bass will spawn around these islands and then they kind of move out from these islands. This lake is primarily bowl shaped. It's very flat. There's not a whole lot of contours. So we're gonna be fishing a lot of cover that we can see with our own eyes. We're going to be fishing a lot of grass. So it should be a lot of fun. So let's do it. I just stopped on this little island right here and uh, there's some scattered grass. I've seen some scattered grass out there. Oh, there's some fish. See that on the on the unit? There's a fish right there. Probably a big carp the size that he looks. I always usually start out, especially in the mornings, but almost in general, I'm going to start out with some moving baits. Looks like we got a couple of grass clumps off this point right out here. The only thing I really don't like about this area is the water looks like booty. It does not look good. I mean, it's dirty. Almost looks a little bit like an algae bloom of some sort. Man, that looked like a bass that just jumped right there. It didn't breach like a carp definitely wasn't as big as most carp look like about a two pound bass i feel like most of these fish are probably going to be relating to the bank with the water color but there's there's so much grass i mean if you pan out here there's so much grass those, those fish could really be anywhere um, but what i've learned a lot over the years is if bass can be anywhere then a lot of times they're nowhere <laughs> is, is kind of the saying that i've come up with and the reason being is that those fish they're going to be too spread out That is a fish. Okay. Okay, we got the first clue. Good night, that thing. One of the weirdest bites I knew I needed to keep pressure on him. All right, well, we got the first clue. Pick this up, uh, a bass. He's kind of skinny on the skinny side. He'd probably be a two pounder if he was a little bit fatter but he is not even probably going to weigh a pound and a half but that fish weighs 149 so almost a pound oh no he came in at 154. this fish was super tight to these rocks i'm gonna let him go thank you buddy i really appreciate it his mouth is a little jacked up but this fit that fish didn't even bite the bait um i literally just felt the the bait shift in the water um, as you can see behind me, it looks like a, a almost like bank grass, but it's really a riprap bank that's kind of covered up by uh, the bank grass itself. So the fish really didn't hit hard. Um, this is the third stop I've made. I'm, I'm giving myself about 
15 minutes on each little area. Right now, I'm just kind of hitting these main lake points. Like this is nothing that's a secret. It's just something that I feel like in, in the summertime, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna fish, I'm gonna fish main lake points. Uh, you know, and if you're fishing deeper water impoundments, that may be way out on the on those points. But on this particular body of water, it's so shallow that it's literally a point. I mean, I'm on the bank here. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run this pattern for a little bit more. Or I'm gonna I'm gonna see if it's a pattern. That may have just been a fluke fish, but I'm gonna keep running these a little bit more to see if it is a pattern, um, and maybe we can take advantage of it while the sun's not too high. So, first fish, pound and a halfer. Uh, let's just keep going. We're we're only let's see how far we are into the day. We're only about 45 minutes in, so that's perfect. Something you always want to do is. Work that area over hard when you catch a fish. If you've ever, if you've ever pond fish, which I'm, I'm sure most of the people watching this have pond fish at one point, when you see a group of fish in the water, they're almost never alone. They're almost always two, three, four fish. And the same exact thing happens in these bigger lakes. You'll have little wolf packs of bass. So I always fish this area that I immediately caught a fish in really hard because you just never know when a little wolf pack is by that you can kind of take advantage of, especially if you're a tournament fisherman. You know, you could pick up a limit real quick or you could just pick up two, three, four keepers real quick. So the thing that's a little bit different about this point in comparison to the other ones that I kind of fished is one, it's got a little bit deeper water close by and there's not as much grass here. You know, there's not as much uh, grass out here that are, that are pulling the fish away from these rocks. So it's, it's got a little bit of everything. Definitely a place I can see a lot of fish being, but we're just gonna have to see. I'm using a, a Chatterbait Mini Max. If you guys have been around my channel, you know that I absolutely love this, this little bait. It catches a lot of fish for me. Oh gosh, I felt like I just got rocked right there. May have just came through those rocks just right though. <laughs> Try that again. But this bait, I mean, not just for, you know, a chatterbait is uh, the jackhammer. There's a fish right there. I knew there'd be one right there. That's a good one. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Gosh, he swallowed it too. Woo Let's freaking go. Oh, I thought that was a lot bigger fish. I was literally just talking about it. Look how he ate that bait though. I mean, he got that sucker. I was just talking about it with you though. A lot of times if you catch one, you want to fish that area really hard because you never know how many fish could be in a real small area. The fish is probably about the same, uh, maybe a pound and a half or so. You know what? They're not big to get started, but it's something. So you got you to gotta get started. I'm hoping there's a lot more fish here. Let's weigh this one and see what he weighs. <laughs> Almost the exact same, 1.56. So we got a 1.56 and a 1.54, a little over three pounds start our day. We just caught that other fish. There might be more here. So I'm going to put this fish back quick and uh, maybe we can really get into them real quick. The big thing with these chatter baits is you just kind of want to vary that r r the speed. If you can see here, I'm always kind of pumping the bait. I really think that that's important. That fish actually hit the bait as it was falling. I pumped it kind of actually over a rock and uh, let it fall for a split second and uh, he loaded up on it. There's another fish. Golly, not a keeper. But man, this is, this is something I've really learned about fishing over the years is multiple casts in areas when it's tough. I mean, you guys have literally watched me cast at this same rock about 20 times now, and now I'm stuck in it. But here, I, here again, I'm casting all over the place, and even though that wasn't a keeper, it just goes to show you that sometimes you have to make a lot of casts in the same area to catch what's there. You have to, you have to trigger them eventually. Now, after catching a few keepers on this rock point, I actually decided to turn the boat around and work the point on into this bay. I'm gonna put a new trailer on here on my Mini Max quick. I'm gonna show you what I use for a trailer. This is a 
Strike King Caffeine Shad. It's a great little soft jerk bait, uh, but I love it for the Mini Max trailer. I actually, rig it up kind of special. Um, you can see on the on the top here, there's a ridge, and about an inch above that ridge, I'm going to cut that bait in half. So you're left with this, uh, and then this little belly part right here, I'm going to cut the belly off, just like this, and that is my trailer. Now I like to rig it where the curved side is on the bottom and the flat side on top. I'm going to add a little, little tiny dab of super glue just to help keep that bait up there because I got a feeling we might end up throwing this bait a lot today just judging by what I've seen so far but I have been wrong I've been wrong about fishing more times than I've been right <laughs> Oh, there's one. Oh, he came off. it, dude. I saw that one. That was the best one of the day. Dude. Oh. Felt like one popped it right there. Felt like one hit it. There's one. I knew he'd come back. Yeah. All right. So much has happened to me in the last like five minutes. Um, but I was talking to that guy on the bank up there. Just caught us a little keeper. I mean, a little a little 12 incher. But uh, it's a keeper nonetheless. That is a .92. We're talking about giants. Good old Ohio fishing right there. But a .92, third keeper. I'm gonna toss him back, but literally in the last five minutes, I lost that two pounder, which I told you guys about, but then I hooked an, into another really good fish. I didn't see it. Um, th there's a lot of catfish in here. It could have been a catfish, but it just, man, it, it pulled like a bass for the split second I had it on. So uh, we're kind of working our way back here. We got a mix of rocks and grass now and shade. Um, so I don't know if this is the deal, but I do know that those fish are, are wanting this bait really shallow and moving um, really fast. So uh, I, I think I might, what I might do is actually fish through this with the, the, the Mini Max and I might come back through with the frog because there's a couple of mats uh, just along the shoreline here that if these fish are that tight on the shore, they might be up under. So I'm gonna fish through with the Mini Max, come back with the frog, and then we're gonna keep on keeping on. So, but hey, we got three fish in the first, uh, what, hour and a half here. Um, so we're just gonna keep going. This is fun. Now, after fishing around that third spot for about an hour, I decided to try and duplicate this pattern. And I looked for other main lake rocky points that I could fish throughout this island chain. Calls for... Okay, that'll get the heart going in the in the morning. Just tossing one of your favorite rods out of the boat. We got her back though. What a gomer! Oh man, I just had one absolutely rip me right there. There he is. I got him that time. Feels like a... Woo! 
Well, we just got keeper number four. It is not a big fish, but uh, kind of fits the pattern. We got rock. We got a lot of wind in this area, as you can see. And I, I cast up into that area and I, I had one absolutely hit me hard. I don't know if it was the same fish, but I put my raptors down and I actually put my spot lock on, which is keeping my boat parallel to the shore right now, which is super awesome. And uh, I just repeatedly casted there until I got bit. So keeper number four, not a big one, but we're, we're working our way to a limit. It's a 1.03, so definitely not a big one. But we are we are catching a couple here and there. We're getting we're trying to get to our 12 pound goal. So I'm gonna keep casting around, see if I can't catch another one. Thanks, buddy. Whatever that is, it's big. I mean, really big. I think that's a catfish. Yep. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, that's gotta be a cat. Or a freaking carp. I want my bait back though. Oh my gosh. Oh jeez. Big old catfish. I can't get her up. Yeah, that's a big old one. Look at that big old flat. That's my biggest flathead yet. Gosh, I love catfish. I didn't even know there were flathead in this lake. How big do y'all think that is? That's my biggest flathead. I used to fish for nothing but flatheads back in the day. I loved these guys. Well, I didn't, I fished for catfish. I'd say what, maybe 25, 30? Gosh, they are beautiful. People say these things are ugly, but look at that thing. Gosh, I love flatheads. All right, buddy, you ready to go back in? Thanks for the fun. Gosh, that thing is huge. All right, see ya. Gosh, I don't love catching channel cats when I'm bass fishing, but catching a big flyhead like that, I don't know if any of you all this way, but I grew up loving cat. I still love cat fishing. I just don't do it as much. And uh, it was always like a dream of mine to catch a big flathead. The biggest one I've ever caught was 25 pounds that I weighed. And that one definitely seemed quite a bit bigger than that one, but I just don't know. It's hard for me to judge a fish that size when I don't do it regularly. So if any of y'all know how big you think that thing was, just let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Gosh, I didn't even know there was flathead in here. I thought it was just channel cat. That thing up like seriously whooped me. I went around and I caught a lot of short fish doing this pattern, but I really wanted to catch some better fish. So after looking at Google map, I actually realized there was a portion of the lake that I have never fished before that had a lot of pads in it. And so I thought I might go try to fish some vegetation and some pads to see if I couldn't catch a better quality fish. Here we go. All right, we got number five. Better fish there, probably in the two pound range. Man, it's been a little while since I got a, a, a decent keeper bite. I've been catching a lot of short fish and I was trying to run a pattern that I think was dying. And uh, I just decided to get away from that whole part of the lake and just try something different. 
2.11. So we got 718. We still got about two hours left, but that's definitely a lot more like what we want to catch. I'm gonna let her go. Thank you, fish. Thank you for keeping me sane. I just abandoned ship on what I was doing this morning. You know, I really thought I could go around and find another one of those areas where I could potentially catch a lot of fish. And, you know, I had a couple of two pounders, two pound plus fish that swiped at my bait that I hooked up with. And so I just, I, in my mind, I kept wanting to do that. And that might be a fluke fish. I mean, there's 5 billion pads where I'm sitting right now. But I'm going to take my time. I'm going to see if I can't find another section in here where I, where I can catch a fish. So interesting thing about that fish is when I pitched in there, he actually came up to the roof of the pads, snatched it off the roof and took it down. Um, so that's something I want to put in the back of my mind. They may be biting frogs. Um, I've, I've thrown the frog a little bit. Um, but that might be a clue that they're biting them. So I'm going to keep flipping. I'm going to frog and uh, maybe here in the last two hours we can call up to 12 pounds. But that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that fish. Hopefully we can get some more of them. Now, after fishing around these pads for about an hour, I realized that this was something that was going to be extremely time consuming, just like it is every time you fish vegetation of some sort. There's going to be small stretches where all the bass are, but there's a lot of dead water. And with a little bit of time left in my day, I really just didn't have the time to devote to this pad fishing deal. So with the wind and clouds that had started to move into the area, I decided to go back to these rock points to see if I couldn't call up a few times late in the day. real key to fishing a, a chatterbait is just letting it tick those rocks. I mean, square bill is pretty easy because you can just let it bang in, but you don't want that chatterbait to get too deep down in the rock so you'll get hung. You just kind of want to brush it across the top. That'll call up. Well, conditions have changed quite a bit since this morning. Just got a another little keeper here. I think he'll call up that 0.92 that I have, not by a whole lot, but conditions have changed. It's gotten a lot. Oh, once you know it, he weighs 0.92. You little turd. So I flipped pads for about an hour and I really liked doing that, but you know, I covered a ton of water in this little section of pads and it just wasn't happening at all. Um, I caught that one better one. I think if I were to give that, you know, three or four hours, I could probably find the A section or two. It's just, it's so tough and there's so many pads. You just, you really just have to go and fish them. Um, so I came back to kind of the pattern. Uh, as, I, as I came into this padded, pad area, I noticed there was a couple of these rock points, kind of like what I had caught them on earlier. And sure enough, the first one that I like decide to go back to, the wind's pushing in on it. I catch two fish, both of them are keepers, uh, no calls. Um, so it's, that's definitely a pattern. I feel like I could go around and run that and catch a limit. You know, if I was fishing a tournament, that's probably what I would do. I, I would spend the morning time just running around, catching a limit off the rocks, maybe catching one good one here or there. I definitely had a couple of opportunities today and then maybe spend the rest of the day in the pads. Um, but you know, we still have about an hour, um, 10 pounds. We have, we have a 0.92, we catch a four pounder and we're going to be right at 10 pounds. Um, and we have a little over seven right now. So I know it's not a lot of big weight, but this is just the reality of this particular lake. So let's, uh, let's just keep fishing. There he is. Not a keeper. 
still a couple around, I guess. That was the hardest hit I've had all day, except for that catfish. There he is. Okay. Oh. Man, come right back over here and start catching them. That might help. 0.99. Almost a one pounder. Thanks, buddy. Come on, there's got to be some better ones up there than that. Come on. No, there's got to be some better fish. Well, it ended up being a, a tough day on a very pressured fishery. Uh, we ended up with five fish that weighed 7.25 pounds, not our 10 pound mark that we wanted. But the star of the show was the Mini Max. You guys know I talked about it all day long. I also threw that on an Arc B Hite rod. This is a rod. Uh, designed for a chatterbait itself and then I had that on a Bruin ELS uh, 7.2 to 1 gear ratio reel with 20 pound straight fluorocarbon so that was my setup that's what I caught most of them I caught that one fish flipping in the pads you know if I were to come back here tomorrow uh, let's say it was a tournament I would actually fish these rocks in these areas to try to pick up a limit and then i'd probably spend the rest of the day trying to flip up one or two or three big fish that would kind of be what i did but all in all you know i fished all new water today water that i've never even fished on this lake which is just bizarre to me that a lake so close to my house i've i've never touched a lot of it um, and, and there truly is a lot of water here that i've never touch so it, it was fun to get out find some new areas find some new stuff um, but anyways if you guys enjoy the lake break series you'll probably enjoy this one that i did right here uh, thank you for watching subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video